Jervis, Jamaica, Miles Alterbridge, Bermuda, Cameron Mathlin, Grenada, Teandre Fritt, British Virgin Islands, Kadim Chenapu, Trinidad and Tobago, Byron Walker, Jamaica. Let's go through the field for you. There's Chenapu. He's in lane number seven, fastest in qualifying at 21.68. Then in lane six, Teandre Fritt was in the 100 final, finished sixth. He returns for the 200 final. Desperate for a medal here, the British Virgin Islander. In five, the crowd will love this one. They'll cheer him all the way around this half lap event. Cameron, Cameron Mathlin, second, over 400 meters behind a record run from the Jamaican, Nicoy Bramwell. Miles Alterbridge looked really good in qualifying for Bermuda, 22.37 to get here. Can he produce another impressive performance? The Jamaican Crypto Trials winner, Oshane Jervis, was the second fastest in qualifying, 21.78 behind Chinapu. He'll feel confident he can medal here too. Skylar Charles Grenada goes in lane number two. And on the very inside in lane number one, Charles of Guyana. And on the very inside in lane number one, Zion Sambo, fourth in the 100 final, didn't look as good in 200 qualifying. The best part of his race looks to be the first 60 or 70. Yeah, exciting young talent is uh, Sambo. Getting the better of his uh, Kurosawa teammate, uh, Devint. Final of the under-17 boys, 200 meters. Kadim Chadapu told me that he felt in the shape to run 10-4 for 100 meters. Got the silver medal there behind the Jamaican Nyron Wade. This is a marvelous opportunity to win gold. He's in seven. There is Byron Walker, Jamaica, in eight. Run a personal best in qualifying. Set. Off they go. 200 final under 17 boys. Mathlin of Grenada got away well. Chinapu is well into his running as well. So to his Jervis of Jamaica. Sambo of Curacao on the very inside. Sambo of Curacao has the lead. Chinapu is coming forward. So to his Jervis of Jamaica. Chinapu on the outside. Strikes Gariff the goal. Fred, I think, got silver ahead of Shane Jervis, who looks hurt, the Jamaican. But Chinapu, the 100 silver medalist, has taken the 200 in emphatic fashion. He blew the field away over the last 20 or 30, clocks 21.78, and celebrates in front of the Trinidad and Tobago fans who have been here in numbers from day number one. Agony for the bronze medalist. Oh no, he's the silver medalist, Oshane Jervis. Somehow, he held on to second, somehow, because he was feeling pain from about 15 meters out. Well, he looked the best in uh, qualifying. He looked good in the 100 meters. Chinapu justifying his pedigree and coming through 21.78 to win the gold ahead of Jervis and uh, Frex. Kadim Chenapu, champion of the under 17 boys, 200 meters. Fred wins the bronze medal, 22 1 8. Thought for a second he'd gotten up to take silver. Sambo, told you, fourth, 22 2 3. Yeah, told you Fred was desperate for a medal, and the opportunity was there for him to grab it. Well, Oshane Jervis, this and young man wasn't even on the radar a year ago. And his coach, Michael McIntosh, decided to have him train through the summer. And here he is with a Carifta silver medal. Fred, in fact, the only athlete eligible in this field to return next year. So he'll be looking to upgrade that. And you see Chinapu there, ready, just taking the race out. Breaks the stagger early. Comes off the curve. Perhaps neck and neck with Sambo. And then just pulls away, coming down the home straight. Sambo left in the wake, places fourth. But there comes young Fret. You already see Jervis struggling a little bit in the last few meters of the race, basically just holding on and allowing momentum to carry him across the line. But it carries him enough for a silver medal. It was a dominant performance from Kadim Chenapu of Trinidad and Tobago. Positive 0 0.9 meters per second, the wind speed. 21.78, Oshane Jervis of Jamaica, 
courageously holding on for silver. 22-1-6 with Teandre Fritt of the British Virgin Islands. 22-1-8. Zion Sambo of Curacao is a double fourth place finisher at the Carifta Games. Mathlin second in the 400 meters, fifth at 200. Let's head to Gerard Marsili. Surprisingly for you, Ricardo, I was fast enough to catch up with Kadeem. Kadeem, congratulations. Thanks, sir. Tell me about that race you were able to run from one of the outside lanes, not too much distractions. What was it like executing for you? Well, it was brilliant. I don't know how I get one of the outside lanes when I went in with the faster times, but I didn't study it. Now going in and did my thing. Winning the gold medal, what does that mean to you? Well, it means a lot. It's what I've been training for to beat them Jamaicans because them Jamaicans are them soft. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Well, so, congratulations to you. You are the gold medalist for the boys under 17. Yes, sir. And uh, yeah, yes, well sir. done. Thanks. Yeah, back to you, Ricardo and Terry. Well, well I tell yeah. you what, fear came because the Jamaicans <laughs> did say yesterday that I don't remember exactly who it was I, that I somebody was soft. That. So yes, that was you. And so I guess fear came to Kadim Chinapo. And uh, well, uh, Kadim trying to shut down our broadcast. <laughs> 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 well, there you go. And, uh, yeah, terrific performance uh, from him, though. And, by the way, he made a point about not understanding why he ended up in lane number seven based on the latest mm -hmm. rules from World Athletics. Lane seven is now considered a one premium, of a premium the lane. preferred yeah. lanes. And so you'll find that a lot of the fastest qualifiers end up in that lane seven. I'm not a fan of it because I think that...